morning to all of you. Uh, well, it's nice to see so many people attending this uh, DigiPlace information meeting. People are still arriving, but uh, it's time to start now. So my, my name is Carol Bachmann. I will be the moderator of this session this morning. And I'm also the manager of the European Rental Association, IRE. Um, I will start with a few housekeeping rules that uh, we should see on the presentation very soon. Um, yeah, very soon now, I think. Uh, please turn off your cameras. Uh, we would like to see you all, but uh, we are quite a lot of participants today. It's also better for the quality of the, of the connection. Um, please also stay on mute if you are not the speaker. Um, if you have questions, so there are two options. Either you want to ask a question during the presentations, then please send them to me on the chat and I will select one or two questions after uh, the presentations and uh, read them to the speaker, providing we have enough time. Uh, we have also reserved some time after the three presentations for a Q&A session. So if you want to ask a question then directly, please send me a chat telling me you would like to ask a question. I will then call your name and then you shouldn't uh, forget to unmute to introduce you shortly and uh, if possible to tell to who the question is addressed. Uh, I'm sure you know about that, but there is a chat function um, where you can also chat uh, directly to one person. So if you want to communicate with me, please use it. And uh, yes, the session will be recorded and uh, we will start right now the recording. Um, I would like also to show you the agenda of this 90-minute uh, information meeting. I think we should see it very soon on our screen. Okay. Um, so as you know, first, this information meeting is uh, replacing a physical workshop that uh, should have taken place today in Hanover in the Komatsu factory. Uh, unfortunately, of course, due to the COVID-19 situation, uh, we decided some weeks ago to, um, to, to adapt the meeting today. So we kept the date but we proposed uh, this information meeting instead and to, to a bigger audience. So um, we will first hear um, some messages from uh, Niklas Nilhot from CEC, from uh, Mrs. Georgieva from the European Commission and from Michel Petitjean from IRE. And then we will hear three presentations about the DigiPace project from uh, Claudio Mirarchi, from Alain Zarli and Nicolas Naville. And then we will have the Q&A session. And after the Q&A session, Ricardo Viaggi from CEC will, uh, will conclude uh, the meeting. So without further ado, I would now like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Niklas Nilho, the president of CEC. Niklas, are you on the line? I haven't seen you yet, but... Abs absolutely, okay. and I hope you can hear me well. Very well. Thank you very much, uh, Carol, and uh, a great welcome to, to all of you on behalf of, of CC, and uh, thanks a lot for, for attending. I'm really looking forward to, to this uh, digital virtual event, and uh, unfortunately, we, we didn't have the, the possibility to, to meet face to face this time. Uh, I really hope that you are all safe in these uh, difficult times. And uh, as already mentioned by, by Carol, uh, my name is Nicholas Nilrut. I'm the president of, of CC, and uh, in my daily work, I'm working for, for Volvo Construction Equipment, uh, where I'm currently having the, the vice president role for, for sustainability and public affairs. Uh, some short words. Uh, 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 around CC uh, and, and our organization and, and operations. CC represents in total the interest uh, of, of 13 national associations for uh, construction equipment manufacturers. And uh, we speak on behalf of an industry of, of totally about 1,200 companies employing some 300,000 people. And uh, we are creating value 
for uh, some 40 billion euros uh, annually. Of course, in, in the current situation, the, the COVID-19 situation is, is, is our main focus. But we also believe that it's important to also utilize this time to be prepared for, for a return to a more natural business situation, even if we, it will take, we know, some time to get back to the same situation where we were a, a few months ago, or, or actually a few weeks ago. Uh, we all know that we as European construction equipment manufacturers need to be globally competitive and uh, we know also that uh, we need to seize the opportunities in the area of digitalization to, uh, to, to uh, enable this and uh, digitalization is absolutely one of our key areas in our strategy looking forward. I'm therefore also very glad and honored that uh, CC has the opportunity to lead and coordinate all actions in communications and events for the DigiPlace project. DigiPlace is for sure an important consortium and collaboration uh, uh, effort for a usually fragmented sector. This is an opportunity to uh, uh, to get together and do something good for the complete value chain of, of uh, construction and, and our part con construction equipment. CC has been on board on DigiPlace since the very beginning of the project as part of our digitalization strategy and willingness to work in a value chain approach. The goal for CC in DigiPlace is to make sure that the added value of platforms is used in construction and to integrate current activities by all our member companies. In terms of today's meeting, after a general introduction about the project, uh, we will today hear about two important work streams. The evaluation of the current panorama of platforms for construction and also the definition of the reference architecture framework for the future. And I'm really looking forward to, to hear about this. I'm also happy to reactivate the communications and dissemination activities of the project in these challenging times of, of COVID-19. I'm also very happy to organize this together with the European Rental Association. Um, I'm also pleased to have the DigiPlace project officer and program assistant at DG Connect, Rosica Georgieva, uh, online in today's meeting. And I will very soon uh, give the floor to you, Rosica. Finally, a great thanks to all of you for joining us uh, today. I'm really looking forward uh, to, to this uh, digital event today. I hope that you will all join, enjoy this session. And of course, most important in this time, stay safe. And with that, the floor is yours, Rositza. Thank you so much, uh, Niklas. I'm uh, really happy to, to be part of this meeting. And yes, we live in very challenging uh, times, but if we try to stay positive and look at the positive side of the events, um, we, we can still be in touch and we can communicate and we can take this time as an opportunity to think strategically of what can be done after we're back to normal, whatever this normal is. And uh, I know that the first weeks, even months, will be very difficult when you go back to work and maybe you will not have really time to, to think about new development, innovations and actions. But now it's really the time. So with this, um, I would like to thank the organizers of the event for uh, inviting me and for Nicholas for the um, nice introduction. As he said, I'm the project officer of uh, DigiPlace 
This is the winning proposal in one of our actions to support the construction sector, uh, namely uh, when we called for a coordination and support action within Horizon 2020 projects to encourage stakeholders across Europe to join efforts and to prepare a roadmap for the coherent common approach within the European construction sector. What does this mean? It's we really put a lot of expectations in a DigiPlays project. We consider it extremely important to set up the, the ground rules and to guide us of what it's necessary to do as next steps. But maybe if I go a step back, um, the European Commission uh, has realized the importance of the construction sector many years ago, as you're aware. And I'm sure that every one of you knows that um, the digitization of the construction sector is still below its true potential and much more needs to be done in order to, to get there where are other sectors like manufacturing. Uh, the European Commission has supported, promoted, developed several policies and initiatives aiming to foster the digitization of the sector. Um, if we start from 2012, when we launched the strategy for sustainable competitiveness and the, of the construction sector and uh, its enterprises, or in 2013, uh, when we launched the Construction 2020 Action Plan, through which we tackled challenges related to innovation uptake, including digitization, but also uh, challenges related to finance, internal market and regulation, skills and qualifications, something really important because it's often one of the main cited challenges of why digitization does not pick up in the construction sector. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, the digitization of the construction sector, it's part of our research and innovation programs and has been supported through, pro through these programs. Uh, but also, it is important that the construction sector and its digitization, it's also integrated in uh, other policy areas. It's considered a horizontal sector. For example, in the EU Directive on Public Procurement from 2014, promotes the use of uh, building information modeling in the construction projects. Or something that is more close to my uh, file, uh, in the Digitizing European Industry Initiative from 2016, in which initiative we encourage digital transformation across industry, industries and with that through boosting innovation potential and strengthening leadership through partnerships and industrial platforms. And the call uh, where DigiPlace uh, comes from, it's a part of uh, digitizing transformation call within Horizon 2020. Um, of course, I will not uh, say anything uh, in details about DigiPlace because I consider that uh, it is important that the project is presented by uh, its uh, consortium. Um, but I will say a few words about what are our next steps uh, considering in the policy field related to the construction sector. Um, the EU construction industry is calling directly for policymakers to support and lead the digital transformation of the sector. For, for example, we heard that it's necessary to develop a specific regulatory framework on data policy that, that can support. Um, as you may know, recently in February this year, we adopted the digital package and this package puts forward an ambitious strategy on data, on the use of artificial intelligence, and the overall strategy on Europe's digital future. The goal is to create a single market for data by ensuring access to high quality industrial data and supporting SMEs to use artificial intelligence. Within this package, we're also considering as next steps setting up the necessary uh, groundwork for the development of common European data spaces across sectors. At the moment, we're discussing uh, manufacturing sector, 
but of course construction there is a big part that can fit within the manufacturing so i think this devel development will be very interesting for you too um, the commission actions have a strong focus on supporting industry towards climate control and digital um, uh, there is quite a lot of noise but uh, this is the so-called the twin transition the priority in the new commission and uh, within this i will mention the new industrial strategy for europe the sme strategy both adopted in march this year as well as the negotiations related to the new horizon europe program and namely the pillar two global challenges and industrial competitiveness the construction sector will be part not in one but in two clusters in cluster four digital and industry as well as in cluster five climate energy and mobility uh, it is still uh, under development and uh, subject to agreement as uh, you know so here um, my my goal is just to mention the developments but maybe in later events we can go deeper i can see that my time is running out so i would i will stop here um and i would like to wish you a productive information session please if you have more questions i will try to stay until the end um apologize if i have to leave early thank you so much and um, have a good event Thank you very much, Mrs. Georgieva. Uh, thank you, Niklas, also, of course. Uh, Michel, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Michel Petitjean, Secretary General of ERA. I would like to say just a few words about ERA first before the meeting. The European Rental Association represents the equipment rental companies and 15 national rental associations in Europe. That's an industry which accounts uh, well above 10,000 companies of all sizes in Europe, with more than 175,000 people and a turnover of around 27 billion. Besides the annual convention that many of you know and participate in it, ERA is mostly active through its committees in the fields of promotion, sustainability, statistics, technical, and through its future group. I would like here to mention particularly the technical committee launched by ERA almost 10 years ago. And this committee allows the fleet managers of the rental companies and the representative from the OEMs to work together on equipment issues. Over the years, this committee has gained in importance to reach out to a wide variety of issues and to involve an increasing number of active participants. First, over the last three to four years, this committee has been working on the power of data in the equipment rental industry through telematics, BIM, PIM, and so on being in many cases the link between the OEMs and the contractors, the rental companies need to determine which data they need to receive from or to give to the OEMs and the customers to, at the end, improve the customer experience. ERA is proud to be a member of the DigiPlace Advisory Board, together with leading European entities companies and or associations of industry builders, owners, architects, research institutes and ICT firms. ERA is very pleased to organize this information meeting with CC, with which we have had a strong and fruitful relation for a long time. It is good to see that the participants today are not only members of ERA or CC, but of many other organizations welcome to all of you this project of working together with all the stakeholders of the construction industry on creating a roadmap for a digital platform for the construction in europe is critical to the equipment industry and to our association i wish you today to learn more about digiplace and for those who don't know the project yet 
to be as interested as we are in the success of it. Thank you. Thank you, Michel. Um, before we start with the presentations, we would like to show you a short video about the DigiPlace project. Um, it's a video available on the DigiPlace YouTube channel as well as on the DigiPlace website. It should come now. Introducing DigiPlace, an EU-wide collaboration of 19 partners from 11 countries representing the construction industry, academia, and national governments united in a single mission to build the foundation for a digital collaborative future for the European construction industry. Europe's construction sector is unique and rich in history. It's given shape to our beautiful cultural heritage and provides millions of Europeans with a safe and extensive infrastructure and comfortable homes and workplaces. However, when it comes to digitalization, the construction sector has not reached its full potential yet. The sector's long and complex supply chain makes the implementation of innovation difficult. In spite of several promising national and European initiatives to boost digitalization, the complexities of the EU market have prevented cross-trade and cross-country synergies from taking place. That's where DigiPlace comes in. As the shared platform for innovation, collaboration, and mutual learning, DigiPlace aims to provide a solid digital foundation that all European construction players can build upon. Our goal is to integrate digital construction technologies, applications, and services, provide best practices, and plan a roadmap for the future. What will digital construction look like? How can it energize your production and supply chain? How will it affect your work, market, and consumers? A shift to digital can seem daunting. That's why we are building DigiPlace jointly, brick by brick. All across Europe, digitalization is driving the productivity of industries and services, and construction cannot stay behind. Visit our website and get involved now. Let's build the digital future of the European construction industry together. So now it's time to start the presentations. Uh, remember about the questions. If you have some, please send them to me by chat or keep them for the Q&A session. Uh, and now, Claudio, are you online? The floor is yours. Yes, I'm here. Great. Good. So we can start uh, with, uh, with the presentation. Uh, so thank you to everybody to be here. Uh, starting from the presentation, so if we can move from the, the, the next slide. Um, as uh, has mentioned, uh, these, uh, uh, the DigiPlace project is uh, the, the, the winning project, so the first classified for uh, the digitizing and transforming European industry and services uh, call. Um, before uh, starting, let's say, analyzing what is the structure of the project, well, uh, what is the structure of the partner and uh, where we are now, I would like to start uh, presenting a little bit what, is, uh, what was the vision uh, that we have in the development of the project, in the development of this, uh, uh, this idea that then is, uh, has been uh, defined as the DigiPlace project. So uh, moving by, by two slides, uh, we can go with uh, what is uh, and what was the analysis of the construction information flow. So what we analyzed, what we, we see and we see still today is that uh, even in the use of the most advanced uh, digital technologies and digital processes, so if we talk about BIM, if we talk about the integration of BIM with other technologies and processes, what is happening and what we have is that still the process in the construction sector is fragmented. And this fragmentation is due to the uh, longer uh, construction chain, due to the, uh, to the context in which this construction chain works, and so we have to move from a view that uh, create a discontinuity between the different phases of the project 
uh, to uh, scenarios where we can collaborate effectively during the project and where we can easily reuse the information and reuse the services that we are producing during the life cycle of the project. So the point is that we have to move from uh, one perspective that is just uh, on the idea of the single project to a higher perspective that can move from the project to the company and to the construction sectors. So if we can move in the in the slide and uh, the next slide. <clears throat> Okay, so we, we can see here that what's happened is that uh, we have and we need that uh, looking at this picture, so looking at the needs to move from the single project, so to the idea to work and to analyze the data, the information and processes on the single project up to the company and to the, let's say, the, the construction sector, we cannot uh, stop at what is happening and what we have already today moving in the in the national context with some solution and some ideas that are moving and developing in national context but we have to provide a structure we have to provide a, um, an idea of processes and services that can be moved to the european level and that can be used to remove the barriers and uh, optimize the processes between the different countries that we have in the in the European context, and in what uh, in, in what means we we can act on this way, we can see in the next slide that uh, we should use and we can analyze these points, combining the different uh, the different inputs that can arrive from different countries, and provides from one side what can be the tailored services and tailored data that can be used and on the other side provide possibility from everyone to work easily uh, with uh, with an interface with a uh, with processes that can allow this collaboration and more this reuse of the data that are produced during the uh, the long uh, the long construction series so starting from this idea we started with uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with, with the DigiPlace project that I would say is uh, really a, a great effort in the, not only in the research activity that we are developing, but in the, uh, in the, uh, in, 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 in the way that we combine it, different points uh, of the construction sector. And we will see in the structure of the project how we are moving in this direction and how we are integrating these different pieces of the construction chain. So moving on the uh, on the presentation of uh, <clears throat> of the objective of, of the project. So in the in the next slide, you can see what is the main objective of the project. It is the definition of the reference architecture framework for the digital industrial pl platform for the construction sector. So here, these. Uh, this objective is integrated, of course, uh, in a series of different packages that uh, uh, that I will briefly present, and uh, and and you will see that this is one of the main objectives, but is combined with other and uh, will be used to provide the inputs for the future development of this platform. So, moving on uh, on, on the expected impact that we have in the next slide, uh, we can see that, of course. Uh, there are several impacts that will be uh, will be produced by the research of the project, uh, but I would like uh, to to move to present what is uh, the main uh, the, the main consortium uh, that you have briefly seen in the um, in, in in the video. So if we can move to the to the slide with the map, that is easy uh, because here we have the list of of the different partners. Uh, in the next slide here, you can have a view of what are all the partners. We have 19 partners uh, that are involved in the, in, uh, in, in the DigiPlace project, plus seven linked third parties that are working together with us to, uh, to provide all the deliverable and all the research that we are developing. So you can see how we integrate different parts of the, of the construction sector. We have the representation of products, of machine, uh, we have the research with different universities, we have a resource center, we have construction company. 
So we integrated in our consortium a lot of different perspectives. And more, if we move in the, in the next slide, you can see by the structure of the project that uh, also we have created two bodies. The first one, the advisory board that, that now have 27 consolidated members. We have already done two meetings with the advisory board and we have another meetings in a few weeks where we, have, we are working to introduce in our consortium, so introduce in the research that we are doing, also the perspective of different sectors of different, um, of different uh, uh, experts in the sector. And another one that is the community of stakeholders, we have now more than 200 members, and we invite all of you to participate to this community that is uh, a big community that we provide inputs and, uh, on the project and we help us to in integrate and to create a common consensus on what we are developing about, for example, the reference architectural framework and the strategy roadmap that will be developed in one of the uh, in work package six, uh, and we will see how this is integrated in the, in the project. So we we can move to the uh, to, to the next slide. Uh, here you have in this slide and in the other two the picture of uh, the members of the advisory board. So you can see how. Uh, the, the advisory board is structured and what information, what type of expertise we are including in our project. Uh, but moving on uh, by, by, by three slides, so we can see what is the structure of the work package of the project. So <clears throat> uh, you can see that here we have seven work packages, the work package one that is the one uh, of the project management, work package seven that is uh, a, a, a critical one, a fundamental one, that is the one about communication and dissemination that we are using uh, for, uh, also to push the development and, and, uh, and the growing of, of our community of stakeholders, for example. And then you can see that we have what is the work package three that we will have this uh, presentation of today that we already uh, closed, and the work package four that is now running and the two work package will provide the inputs for the development of this reference architectural framework that is now ongoing in work package five and you will see that we have also the work package six that will represent the study of the strategy roadmap that is the analyze and development of possible scenarios for the development and the integration of what we are defining in the in, 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 with the reference architectural framework and according to the previous uh, uh, to the previous analysis in the European context and how we can uh, we, we can push the, the development of this structure. So moving on the on the next slide, uh, you can see what is uh, the picture of today. As I said, the work package three uh, has been completed. We are now running to uh, to close work package four, and we have started working on the reference architecture framework. And you will have the presentation of these two work packages, so work package three and work package five. Uh, as soon as possible, uh, we will start with the analysis of the, uh, the strategy roadmap, so work package six. And so we, we, as you can see, according to what is the, uh, the, the, the actual situation, we are extending, uh, we, we are trying to extend a little bit the project. So the, the project that has been planned to finish in February 2021, uh, probably it will be finished by May 2021. And this is, of course, due to the, uh, to the COVID impact. But we are anyway running in the uh, in the correct direction, uh, providing and still moving on the communication activity, on the research activity, and all what has been planned for uh, for the project itself. So just uh, to close uh, with the uh, with the next slide, um, thank you again to be here in this uh, uh, on this event, and please consider to register to our uh, community as the coder and provide also. Your, your expertise and your inputs to our project. You can see here the, uh, the link for the registration form, and then you will be involved in this big community that will contribute to the development of the project. So thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Claudio, for this presentation. Uh, something I would like to add also is that the slides will be available after the meeting, of course. Um, I see no questions so far, so I would now like to give the floor to Alain. Yes, great. can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, great. Uh, a very good morning to everybody. So I'm Alain Zarli, ECP Secretary General, and I'm going to introduce you to uh, uh, the first bunch of activities that, has been, that have been launched in the context of DigiPlace. Uh, which, uh, which was about, roughly speaking, uh, dealing with a kind of state of the art uh, in terms of digital level, and also trying to make some comparison with potentially, potential, having potential comparison with other sectors as well. Next slide, please. And this is a work that has been led by, by STP, so myself and Alexi David uh, as well, who is uh, who is joining these uh, these uh, online conference too? And of course, with the support of uh, of, of uh, the uh, DigiPlace partners and, and and the stakeholders, as well, by the way, uh, support from many members of the advisory board. So ju just to give you a very quick uh, snapshot about what work package three is about. Uh, as I mentioned to you, it's really about paving the way for, for the DigiPlace activities. And what, uh, what was our intention uh, in this work package was re really to provide a kind of global vision uh, of the level of digitalization of the construction sector uh, throughout three main tasks, uh, the level of implementation of digital technologies and industrial platforms in Europe, uh, a comparative analysis of those existing platforms in the construction sector, but also comparing to some other industry sectors. I'll be back to those sectors later on. And trying to identify uh, some, uh, I would say, impact analyses uh, and also success factors uh, that we would really take care of, and that could be uh, points of knowledge transfer uh, in the uh, specification of the reference architecture framework. So overall, the, the, the outputs of work package three are of course to feed uh, on one side the work which is ongoing in work package four about detailing, uh, putting in more detail uh, the challenge, the barriers, and the gaps towards more digitalization, and shall I say maybe a kind of more harmonized digitalization of the construction sector on one side. Of course, providing uh, the groundings for starting uh, detailing the reference architecture framework in Work Package 5, and of course all these being inputs for for the strategy roadmap and the identification of future priorities for future developments in work package six uh, next slide please next one so i'm starting with 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 task 3.1 uh just very, with a very very quick uh, view on, on the methodology that has been applied uh, in in this first task uh, the idea has been to to, to start with uh, both well uh, try to to set up a list of existing uh, platforms digital platforms that are uh, already in use in the construction sector uh, it could be, by the way, commercial platforms already, but it could be also, I would say, more platforms more orientated towards research and innovation development. Uh, and of course, along this ident identification of existing construction platform, uh, we have tried to identify, of course, criteria to evaluate those platforms, or at least to start characterizing those platforms and having first clustering of these construction platforms. And along with that, we intended to have an online survey to assess a little bit more the, the way end users in the construction sectors also are, are uh, in the construction sector are already uh, 
dealing with, with the use of those platforms. And we uh, add also some interviews with, with key stakeholders. And all those activities has led to a first deliverable about uh, the level of implementation of digital technologies and platforms in the construction sector. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, in terms of characterization, uh, and, and that's, I would say, a very um, macro level characterization uh, in this first task of Work Package 3, uh, we tried for each platform that we have identified uh, in use uh, or uh, being experimented in, in Europe, we have identified a set of criteria. Uh, including, of course, the name of the platform, the, the origin, the rights holder, and so on and so forth. And also uh, the category of platform. Uh, is, it, uh, our, is it collaborative platform? And in case, is it for all phases of the construction, uh, of the construction value chain? Or is it mainly focusing on the design phase or the construction phase, etc.? Uh, and also, uh, are some of those platforms more dedicated, for instance, to object catalogs or to product catalogs or to materials? Uh, or are they more IoT platforms, for instance? Are they beam platforms and these kind of things? Uh, so, uh, the idea was really to be able to have a first level of uh, categorization of those platforms once again uh, at a very macro level. Next slide, please. And uh, all in all, uh, what is uh, important is that, well, we have uh, collected information about more than 300 digital platforms. Uh, and you can have a look at the picture uh, on, on, on the screen. Uh, which provide already a, a first level, for instance, of uh, categorization of those platforms. But we have identified more than 300 digital platforms with uh, many different, of course, as you can imagine, many different characteristics. Uh, for the time being, uh, we got enough information uh, for uh, 200 of those platforms for them to be really characterized and clustered the way I've just introduced in, in the previous slide. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and, and well, this is another, another interesting picture, I would say, uh, that uh, we also try to identify, for instance, uh the 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 origin of the platforms, uh, but uh uh, also uh, trying to see uh, what could be the main characteristics uh, once again of those of those platforms. Then we try to have an online survey uh, disseminated among practitioners of the construction sector and uh, it's worth noting that we have a first uh, a first wave for this online survey and you can see the outcomes uh, of this online survey in this first wave with 186 responses in 17 countries to get really a kind of first snapshot of, of the digital practice in the real world. But we have reopened this online survey and uh, all of you, uh, uh, for those who have not done yet, you are very, very welcome uh, as Claudia mentioned, first uh, to, to to get to the uh, TG Place uh, community of of interest, but also, of course, to get to this online survey and provide us with your own feedback in terms of using digital tools or digital platforms. Next one, please. Uh, so. Uh, we got uh, a first level of answers, which is probably, and this is also one of the reasons why we, we have reopened the online survey. We, 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 we got a first level of answers about the use of advanced digital tools and tech and technologies. Having 186 responses is not enough, of course, from our point of view. Uh, to, to, from a statistical point of view, as you can imagine, to get a, 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 a very detailed 
and, and trust full uh, opinion on the use of those platforms. Uh, this first survey was really for having a first snapshot and we expect to have hopefully uh, more information through uh, this online survey which has been uh, which has been reopened. Next one please. Uh, so, uh, this online survey, uh, not very surprisingly, I would say, already raised the fact uh, that uh, the most advanced digital tools or, or, or uh, platforms are uh, fundamentally uh, re uh, relying on the use of, on, of BIM, building information modeling platforms, uh, on one side. And, and trying to, to deal with those digital tools that allow you to manage 3D drawing, modeling, relying, of course, on building information modeling, and especially the standards developed uh, in uh, building smart. Uh, and also, to a certain extent, also a little bit to digital tool for planning of 4D simulations. So that's the main use uh, th that, have been, uh, that have been registered through uh, through this online survey. Next one, please. Uh, so we receive indeed many inputs, uh, also on the added value uh, for for those practitioners uh, for digital tools and and technologies, and also the obstacles faced by those practitioners. And and we have summarized on these slides some of, of, of the main categories uh, of the inputs received, uh, mainly about project efficiency and management, business economics, service to the client, and also, well, uh, the capability, of course, to manage data and, and technical aspects. Uh, and in terms of obstacles and missing feature, features of functionalities, once again, from the point of view of the stakeholders, we have tried to classify them uh, in terms of, well, standards and formats, problems or lack of standards and formats, interoperability and connectivity, technical features, cost and accessibility, and lack of knowledge and openness in the construction sector. But you can imagine that, of course, this is quite a lot of information, and I have no time, of course, here to detail all those information. Uh, but you uh, can have access, uh, of course, uh, once there will be a final agreement from the European Commission to disclose uh, these uh, the, the deliverables of, of Work Package 3, and in particular, D3.1. Uh, you will have access, of course, to detailed information on the outcomes of this online survey. And then next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, there was interviews with key stakeholders across the AU. The idea, of course, was a little bit to, to have a, 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 an additional way, in some way, to cross-check a little bit the outcomes from the previous activities uh, in terms of clustering the platforms and also the online survey, and trying, of course, to uh, on one side, refine the digitalization context that we were uh, that we were elaborating uh, for the construction and other sectors, and also potentially collect examples and, and good practices. Uh, and from those interviews, there were some uh, once again main observations that are detailed in, in deliverables three point one. Uh, but with some 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 key points, uh, in particular, of course, a major gap that we have really to deal uh, fr from our point of view in in DigiPlace among companies in terms of size and subsectors, which mean that, as you can imagine, the big players, uh, the large contractors, of course, already have digitalized their, their processes and are largely using digitalized tool and digital tools and platforms, which of course is not the case for many of the SMEs uh, in the European construction sector. Uh, uh, but also that there is still a need for, on one side, more standards and harmonization. And I do believe that, well, we, we do believe that DigiPlace has a key role to play here. And the need to share good practices among public and private stakeholders. And this has in some way confirmed the rationale to do this specific work in, uh, in, uh, with DigiPlace and, and 
to come back to this reference architecture frame and, 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 and to come to this reference architecture frame. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, at the same time in the chat, well, Alexi has provided you with, with the link to the survey, yeah, if you are interested. Uh, then, uh, well, uh, in task 3.2, uh, which, uh, uh, by the way, was uh, about uh, a comparative analysis uh, of existing platform in the construction sector and in other sector. Uh, the uh, the message has, 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 been the, has been the following. Well, we, as I mentioned to you, we have listed more than 300 platforms. We have clustered more than 200 platforms, but it was of course difficult for us uh, to have a detailed technical evaluation of all platforms. So we decided to go for a selection of some representative construction digital platforms. And once again, we identify evaluation criteria, which this time, of course, are more technical one. And based on this, uh, we have done a detailed characterization of those platform uh, in terms also of features and functionalities they offer or enable. We have done the same with four other industry sectors because we were interested in having some comparison with other industry sectors which are currently either highly digitalized already or really on the path of a strong digitalization. And those sectors are healthcare, agriculture, aerospace and automotive. And once again, we wanted to have some interviews to collect opinions and consolidate and validate the, the platform analysis. And so the outcome is really a, a detailed and technical comparative analysis of existing platforms and, and already the identification of key aspects to take into account for the development of the reference architecture framework. Next slide, please. So, uh, so very, very quickly, you have here the selection of those construction digital platforms that uh, uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, we have done. And uh, what we have tried to do as well as I mentioned to you is trying to have the global context and, and few representative of digital platforms for the other sectors. And next slide, please. The the, the evaluation uh, of those of those uh, of those platforms uh, has mainly re uh, has mainly relied on on four categories of criteria: use case and services, with more than forty different items for evaluating these specific criteria. Uh, system functioning uh, in terms of how the platform works with data management, the architecture, and this relates to 30, more than 30 items. The usability, which is related to the way the platform adapts itself to different kinds of users and needs with more than 10 items, and also eight items related to uh, the economic factors. And just as an example, we provide some of those items that have been identified for the system functioning criteria. So the second one in the bullet list. And we, you can see that there are different type of, of, of course, criteria related to technical features, the capacity of 3D modeling, cloud architecture, data sharing and diffusion and so on and so forth. The data security and the compliance, for instance, with GDPR and aspects related to robustness. So all those are only few of the 30 items for the system functioning uh, criteria. Next one, please. Uh, so we, we, we end up, of course, with a full evaluation of those uh, selected platform, around 15 platforms that has been selected with with uh, with uh, with uh, with a set of main observations that that have been synthesized on this uh, on this slide uh, uh, which of course the reference architecture framework will consider to make a set of recommendations i would like to insist on one point that has been by the way very rightly raised by uh, uh, by paul by paul sir in the chat is that the objective of, of DigiPlace is not 
at the end of the project to have a new platform developed. And it's really about a reference architecture framework for a digital platform for the construction sector, which means uh, having a framework that specify uh, the way digital platforms should be potentially instantiated, developed, instantiated, uh, make operable and make interoperable among each other. So at the end of the day, what we expect is that there will be potentially maybe new digital platforms, but also that some of the existing digital platforms uh, will be made compliant with this reference architecture framework. So that we have a global framework for the whole European construction sector in terms of future digitalization. Uh, unfortunately, I'm lacking a little bit of time, so I'm not getting into the detail of those specific main observations, but I would like maybe very quickly in the next slide to get back to one point, which is, as I mentioned to you, very, very important. Maybe you can go on with the figure as well, uh, Roma. Uh, so uh, what, what we have done is that uh, we see that this digital platform for which we are going to provide a reference architecture just as a kind of operating system that should enable to plug in services to give access to data with the possibility of course to inter to interrupt uh, to, to to connect to other platform and and to have interoperability with those platform tools and application yeah well identified apis and and you can see on this picture that has been by the way a little bit refined uh, that, well, we see the platform as being uh, split in terms of, of course, data management, middleware, and software uh, application that could be plugged to this platform uh, with a set of already relevant trends. And one can imagine uh, that uh, uh, the basic, that, that this platform could have a kind of basic services and and, 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 and premium services. Basic services probably should come as much as possible for free, at least for those platforms that could be developed uh, at a public level, and, and premium services could be, of course, additional uh, services. Uh, considering one comment from, from Paul, uh, uh, that yes, uh, 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 an operating system is, is a platform, of course, uh, but, but the idea is that the reference architecture framework should provide the framework for the future platform for those kinds of, 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 of future operating system that will serve the different stakeholders from, uh, from the construction sector. Next one, please. So the, the, the last task was trying to identify what could be the success factors uh, that we clearly foresee uh, for this reference architecture uh, to be, uh, well, I would say to get to a common agreement for this reference architecture framework on one side, and that would lead then uh, to, to hopefully generate a kind of snowball effect so that uh, most uh, digital platforms in the future are compliant with this reference architecture framework, which at the same time would mean that more and more actors in, in the sector uh, will rely on those digital platforms and, and digital tools. Uh, so uh, what we have done once again, we have tried to identify those success factors uh, in close relationship with the construction digital platforms and tools needs, but also we have tried to uh, elaborate a little bit what is the case for the other industry sectors uh, and for each success factor, we have tried to list potential research and, and, and development orientations for the future development of the ditch based raft and, and road. Next one, please. So, uh, very quickly, uh, those success factors uh, have been summarized in these, uh, in these, in these, uh, in this slide. And once again, clustered, I would say, in, in technical aspects demand and regulatory aspects, economic aspects, and security aspects. Uh, next one, please. Uh, so uh, these are, well, those have been, well, indeed detailed 
in 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 the deliverable D3.3, and I'm not getting into the detail of that, but if we just refer to one technical aspect, which is, for instance, interoperability and flexibility, it's really about, well, dealing with the compliance with standardized format and API that is seen as crucial uh, to enable a European platform to integrate with other digital solutions. And, and that's, of course, mean that the reference architecture framework on one side and the instantiation in the future of this reference architecture framework will have to deal with variety uh, uh, of formats and API standards in terms of well open beam formats, web standards, uh, API service protocols and, and, and so on and so forth, uh, as well as other standards that are used currently or favored by stakeholders uh, like, for instance, the CEN TC442, uh, for instance. Because that's a point that is, uh, uh, that is very, very uh, important. Uh, so in terms of main remarks on the comparison between sectors, that's very, what is very, very interesting is that there are some characteristics, of course, for the construction sector. Uh, the need of interconnected platforms, for instance, uh, and also with an important role for public authorities at regional and national level, level seems more adapted to fragmented sectors. And, and there are some similarity, for instance, between construction and agriculture in that case, but not, for instance, with other industry sectors. And typically, in turn, connected national platforms are, are not considered in aerospace or automotive. And that's not very, very surprising because, well, there are few and bigger service providers and, and, and big, big players, I would say, in those in those industry sector having and dealing with their own solutions and, and, and systems. We are currently investigating more in detail the aspect of private data protection, for instance, and, and we have, of course, quite a lot to, to we, we may have a lot of inspiration, for instance, regarding the healthcare sector. But it's worth noticing that at the end of the day, uh, through the study that we have made uh, with the other sector, there is no real concept of reference architecture framework in the sense of DigiPlace. So we are trying to elaborate something which is a little bit new, uh, uh, but that will be definitely very, very helpful in the context of, of, of our industry sector, considering that it's formed by more than 97% uh, uh, of ASIN. Next one, please. Uh, so uh, then uh, the T3, uh, well, the, the, this, this last task, T3.3, I've tried to identify some uh, R&D orientations in terms of challenges, open questions, and possible ways of implementation. And what is important is that this is going to feed, of course, the ongoing work in work package four, uh, which is in charge, uh, among others, to, to, to extend uh, the, the further descriptions and possible solutions, according, of course, barriers and gaps that uh, are uh, currently uh, identified. And also for work package five and six, uh, in order to uh, elaborate the reference architecture framework and its specifications, and also then to, to identify what would be the strategy and the roadmap for further development. Uh, so that, that's mainly, uh, and, and I will stop there, I guess, because I've, 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 unfortunately I, I spent a little bit more time than, than initially planned, but I will stop there. That has been the, the main, well, outputs and potential outcomes of, of work package three. So thank you very much. I don't know if you have any any questions or or maybe this will be during the question and answer session. Yeah, I would I would suggest that we jump. Thank you, Alain, first, and I would suggest that we jump to Nicolas' presentation. And uh, if people have some questions for you, they should uh, ask them then during the Q and A session. Yeah. Thank you, Alain. Thank you very much. Now it's up to you, Nicolas, now to go on. Thank you, Carol. Can you hear me well? Very well. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, we, CSTB, are uh, leading the work on Work Package 5, which is about the definition of this reference architecture framework. Uh, basically, my presentation will be uh, mainly about two points. First one is trying to explain what is this uh, DigiPlace reference architecture framework. 
and then uh, explaining how we are currently working on the definition of uh, the key use cases of DigiPlace. So explaining these two important concepts of reference architecture framework and use cases. So uh, this was already introduced. Uh, the reference architecture framework obviously uh, enters the core of DigiPlace project after the two preliminary uh, work packages. Uh, one of them was just presented by uh, Alain right now. Uh, I move directly to the next slide as this was already presented before. So what is this reference architecture framework? Uh, this slide is uh, in the form of a, of a little quiz. Um, first question being, why do we use this complicated word term of reference architecture framework rather than just talking about DigiPlace platform? Uh, so the question is, is uh, DigiPlace going to be a new European digital construction platform? Uh, or uh, to say it in other words, uh, a website accessible through uh, the website of the European Commission? Uh, or will it rather be, uh, on the bottom of the slide, uh, the definition of common guidelines for building and implementing digital construction platforms, with an S, uh, for the construction sector across Europe? Uh, this platform being public or private, local or European, specialized or generalized. Uh, or in between, if you move to the next slide, maybe uh, in between it could also provide common services and tools to help connect connect or integrate existing platforms uh, and obviously as many of you already have, can understand uh, if you move to next slide the answer is simple uh, digiplace and this reference architecture framework is likely to be a, a mix of the three uh, and not just one of these, and particularly not just the first one, uh, because as was already discussed in the chat before, and uh, Alain underlined uh, just before I talked, uh, the, the balance leans more in favor of the third one here, which is defining common guidelines for building and implementing digital platforms across Europe, and not just building one new construction platform, even though there might also be uh, initiatives uh, on this side. So the, this reference architecture framework, as we are currently working on it, is likely to be a mix of the three with yes, a tilt in favor of uh, these common guidelines. Uh, next slide, please. So now the notion, the concept of use cases. This reference architecture framework is built to answer use cases. Uh, with the usual questions to be asked uh, when defining use cases. What do we want to do? Uh, what for? How? And uh, we could add why and also for who. Uh, and so that's the work we're initiating right now, identifying these uh, DigiPlace use cases. First of all, we've got to keep in mind the underlying objectives of the DigiPlace project. Uh, those underlying objectives were defined well outside of the GPS project uh, in the call, and Miss uh, Georgieva already uh, uh, mentioned some of them in uh, her introduction. Uh, I remind the main underlying objectives in this slide uh, very quickly: environmental performance and help the construction sector to make to tackle climate change issues. Industry 4.0, uh, productivity, gain, productivity gains, common language, interoperability, uh, help SMEs uh, in the digitalization process, very important knowledge sharing, mutual learning, best practices exchange, data sharing to help exploit the full potential of uh, artificial intelligence tools, market integration and strengthening, Call for tenders, supply chain management, smart contracts, IPR. And uh, even though it's not written in this slide, uh, this issue is for uh, internal European market, but obviously also for increasing the competitivity uh, of uh, the internal industry, the European industry uh, globally. And lastly, uh, a last underlying objective, uh, the objective which is actually transversal to the others, but 
that can be uh, underlined specifically is the need to integrate other European initiatives in this uh, reference architecture framework, such as levels for sustainable development, construction product regulation, building passport, European building stock 2.0, etc., etc. Next slide, please. So how uh, are we currently working on these use cases definition? So the, the, there are three kinds of inputs that we are using. First, the underlying objectives that I uh, identified, identified in the previous slide. And then the two preliminary, preliminary work packages. So work package three, which is on the analysis of existing, existing platforms and uh, the current level of digitalization. And work package four, which is still uh, in progress, which is more about the identification of the needs and expectations of stakeholders, particularly SMEs, but not only. The identification of barriers to digitalization and to the better inter European integration and the identification of possible measures to mitigate those barriers. And with a special focus also on uh, the willingness and tools to share data. So using these different inputs, we are going to define these use cases to identify them and in investigate them, trying to describe them further uh, as proper use cases. And these, will, these use cases will then be used to define the reference architecture framework. And actually, we are not building on only one reference architecture framework, but we are going to work on several scenarios uh, in order to then discuss them among European stakeholders and try to build a consensus. To define the use cases from these different inputs, we'll have several questions to answer. A few of them here. Uh, do existing services answer the core objectives? The needs and barriers identified. What is missing? What is missing in the current situation? Where are the shortcomings? How to fill the gap? How better European integration can improve things? And what should be replicated from other sectors? Or what is already existing in the construction sector and should be generalized at European scale? This is a few examples of questions that we ask to define these use cases. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, so now I tried here to give a first overview of uh, this identification of use cases that maybe uh, many of you are expecting this. Uh, these, we are uh, still at the beginning of the work on the use cases as uh, the preliminary work packages are still uh, in progress as explained. But uh, the objective now is first to structure the reflection about this definition of use cases. And we've started with defining, uh, identifying the main areas and topics on which we'll have to, to work. And these areas are here in the first column of the table that you can see. We identified six of them. Uh, and I give you some examples of use case categories that we are working on. These are not use cases yet. Uh, maybe uh, you will think that they are not precise enough. That's right, they are not yet described as proper use cases. Uh, at this stage, there are rather topics than uh, proper use cases. But then in each area, there are gonna be several topics and in each topic, we'll have to describe further the precise use cases that we, uh, we will want to develop. And this will be done through uh, brainstorming sessions among partners of the project and also with uh, our uh, uh, the uh, our advisory board and maybe further with uh, other stakeholders of the sector so the six areas we identified are first common language and interoperability and here uh, two examples of possible uh, topics are uh, making uh, product and object databases more interoperable, or it could be also providing a map of existing digital standards to help, help st stakeholders navigate through uh, the standardization issues in a more harmonized way. Second area is about regulations. And here, uh, DigiPlates could help access uh, European or national construction rules, maybe in a digital way, maybe also provide rules taking tools 
help also access cadaster urban and real estate data uh, in a harmonized way this was discussed already uh, third area is about knowledge sharing which also includes data sharing i combine the both in this area uh, and i give two examples uh, the first one is about sharing of private data to uh, allow to explore the potential of uh, artificial intelligence analytics this one i think is particularly important as a work package we identify that uh, this is one of the main focus of the existing platforms in the other sectors such as such as a uh, healthcare uh, agriculture or also uh, aeronautics uh, and it's still lagging behind in the construction sector so we have to think of what data can be shared with which purpose with which value for the uh, stakeholders sharing their data another example of knowledge sharing uh, topic could be uh, the exchange of best best practices on beam projects and this was already proposed by several stakeholders and this for example would be made for example through uh, a proper European construction platform, uh, namely a website. So this is an example of a service that could be provided through a proper platform. Collaboration tools. Uh, so this could, be, this could be provide common guidelines for beam services to improve interoperability. And this, on contrary, is uh, about the, the third kind of, uh, of integration that I mentioned before. It's about, yes, defining common guidelines for existing public or private uh, platforms and services. Uh, fifth area, business and market. Uh, here there are many topics. I just uh, cited two of them here, two examples. Supply chain management. And I could have had digital supply chain. Uh, here the aims to support industry 4.0 with the keywords being off-site, link between conception and manufacturing and so on. Or here also the, the implication of uh, construction equipment manufacturers is quite uh, important, obviously. Uh, another topic in the business field is to provide dedicated tools and services for SMEs digitalization. This is definitely one of the top uh, focuses on the, of the DigiPlex project, so this will be addressed. And the sixth uh, area identified is about environmental performance. Uh, as I already underlined, this uh, is transversal. It's already uh, included in the other areas, but it also, it's also uh, specific enough and uh, important enough to uh, merit a, a, pro, uh, a specific uh, area. So that's why that's why that was isolated. And I give two examples here of uh, possible topics of use cases: is access to environmental product data uh, in a harmonized way and provide LCA tools to every stakeholders, uh, maybe for free, for example, or, or not, uh, help uh, have a correct access to the market of uh, LCA tools, and also maybe collect and analyze LCA data in order to uh, have all stakeholders progress on this. Uh, and then you can move to my, my next slide, just to underline the fact that we are working currently on brainstorming session because the work is not only technical, it's not just about identifying use cases, but also about building a consensus among, among European stakeholders. So um, the brainstorming is uh, going to be launched in a few days and will uh, last by at least by September 2020. And then uh, this will open the way for the last uh, works about the definition of the reference architecture framework and then the strategy world mapping uh, of work package six. Okay, I try not to be longer than that to leave uh, space for the Q&A session. Thank, thank you, Nicola. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, now 10 minutes before 11.30, and I want to let uh, five minutes to Ricardo to conclude the meeting. So um, we just have time for a few uh, Q&As. Um, I saw one or two on the chat, um, and the first one was from Chris de Magala. Chris, uh, do you still have a question to ask? Ask. Uh, hey, just on mute um, and let me know. Yes, um, well, I think the, the the question was uh, very well discussed already, um, parallel to the discussion in the chat. So um, it was already answered. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Very good. And I see that Thomas Allen from KHR has a question just arriving. Thomas? Hello there. Hi, Thomas. Um, yes, I'm, just, I'm aware that Track Unit, through its Eliminate Downtime movement, is making efforts to create a, an ecosystem for sharing data. Um, I was wondering how this keys into Digiplace, or is there some competition there, perhaps? Who is ready to answer the question? I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch well, the question. Hey, this yeah. is Tom. Sorry, yeah. this is Ricardo from, from CC. Yeah, before before Tom Tom says uh, says, says anything because this is one uh, Tom Valbach from from Track Unit uh, as a, a DigiPlace partner, uh, CC, and uh, knowing personally the eliminate downtime movement and the brain of construction uh, idea from from Track Unit, uh, I don't see any possibility of competition between the two. I see actually. The, the the need for collaboration that uh, in my opinion uh, in the opinion of CC uh, is needed in, uh, in this space uh, I, I was uh, in Copenhagen with the track unit when they launched the idea of the brain of construction and I think that any data pool or uh, any data lake uh, uh, that can be uh, that can be um, let's say used uh, will feed into into the platform and the move the, the platform movement of uh, of the industry, knowing that the, the the side of machine is just one element of the construction industry. So uh, I uh, and then Tom being on the line, I think it would be very interesting to get uh, to get his feeling too. But uh, from the DigiPlay side, uh, we don't see any any competition uh, concern. Hey, this is Tom from Track, and thank you so much for for a great couple of presentations. I can only second what, what you say, Ricardo. There is no competition in this place. On the contrary, I think there's a lot of benefits and synergies that we can, we can get from working together closely. So uh, I think the limited downtime movement is really what uh, the name is. It is a movement we're trying to gather best practices within the industry and, and share that to, to, for everybody to be, be better. Uh, so that's, let's say, our uh philanthropical approach if you can put it that way and then i mean from a from a company perspective and products and solutions we we focus on standardization and uh and increased accessibility of data uh to share with through apis so i think that goes well in play with this uh, with this initiative from from digiplace thank you thank you tom um I had also a question from Andy Vincent. Andy, are you online? Yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah, so my question was basically going on from what you guys were just talking about, the eliminate downtime and the, the, the track here in the convention. So currently the, the frustration we have is a lot of OEMs don't even adhere to the AMP 1.2 standard, giving us fuel and idling, let alone the... Um, the AMP2 ISO 15143 um, standard. So, you know, do you guys have any clout to, or are you, do you have any um, ideas to speak to the OEMs to, you know, ask them to provide this information by the APIs because it's currently available on their portals, but they just don't want to give it out via an API. And we just need it in a single source as a, as a higher industry. Maybe maybe a short a, sh a, a short comment on that. More a comment on on, on your question, Andy, than than a real answer. So yeah, you'll be a little bit disappointed. Sorry for that. But but no, your point is very very valid, and it's typically part of these kind of I would say gaps that uh, we are currently uh, identifying in the context of work package four. Yeah, uh, it's not the objective of work package three, by the way. Huh? Work package three was really about having a snapshot of exactly where we are now in terms of existing digital platforms, what they provide, what in case they do not provide according to our criteria and, and, and these kind of things. But that was not the objective of work package three. But your point is very valid and should be integrated, of course, in the set of gaps that are currently collected in work package four, uh, 
so I guess that we have some colleagues currently working uh, on Work Package 4 and, and attending these, uh, these conference. But I do believe that this is one point that has to be, uh, that has to be tackled as well. Cool. Uh, then uh, I'm not sure, to be fully honest, but, but, but we are also in, in a process of, 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 uh, of learning by doing, I would say. Yeah? Let, 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 let's be very frank and honest. We are a little bit in the process of doing by learning. Uh, I still don't have a fully clear picture, at least on my side. So I will let, of course, then later on, Nicola, Claudia, and some other answer as well to you. But I've not yet uh, 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 a clear view on up to which details, uh, level of details, the uh, uh, DigiPlace reference architecture framework should, should end up. Uh, I do believe that uh, there are two points. Uh, there is uh, probably as Nicola mentioned, the need for a set of recommendations for people to implement either new digital platforms or to make their digital platforms compliant, or if they are developing digital tools to be further connect, hopefully, to, to future platform, how they will have to deal uh, in terms of uh, how they will have to manage this kind of plug-in uh, to these uh, DigiPlace compliant, I would say, uh, digital platforms, and which are, for instance, the standards they will have to be compliant with, to be considered as, as being able to plug to any type of digital, DigiPlace compliant platforms. Uh, then the, the point of some specific standards is, is a matter of probably how we are going to align the future works relying on, on the reference architecture framework in terms of how are we going to align with, with, with different set of standards or how are we going to align uh, uh, with, uh, with, for instance, the, um, the, the standards you referred in, 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 your, uh, in, your, uh, in your comment. And this probably is part of, of, from my point of view, uh, will be elaborated in, in the strategic roadmap, which will identify the priorities and the work that we have to identify in, 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 in the next step. Okay, yeah, cool. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Thank you, Andy. Um, we, are running, we are running out of time, so I would like now that we go to Ricardo for the conclusion. Maybe if you have more questions, more comments, just send them either to me or to Roma, and we will try to get uh, the answers to your questions. And now, uh, Ricardo, please, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And thank you very much for uh, uh, your attendance, uh, your interactions. Uh, I still see uh, Paul on the chat uh, uh, discussing about the uh, SANTIC 442 on, on BIM. This is, uh, this is really what we were hoping for. Well, first of all, to, to get the ball rolling again uh, within DG Place uh, in these challenging times, as I said at the beginning, uh, and, uh, and also, and through that, um, Get the ball, uh, get the discussion going back again. Uh, so uh, I think this is uh, this is really an achieved objective today uh, for uh, the initially the rental and the OEM uh, to to discuss uh, among each other. That was the initial goal of the face-to-face -face meeting we should have had that uh, Komatsu went over. Uh, we uh, decided, and I think it was. Uh, now a good decision to enlarge it uh, uh, to uh, to other participants, and uh, I thank uh, the other uh, DigiPlace partners for sharing this uh, the invitation to, uh, to this information session to their members and partners. Uh, I think this was uh, this was indeed a good achievement today. Concerning uh, the topics that are still uh, uh, to be discussed, uh, some of them are being raised in the chat. Uh, I think that the uh, uh, standard uh, uh, standard adoption by by the industry is always a, a key point. So I understand Handy's frustration about the uh, OEMs uh, um, OEMs seeming not to do their their, their part. Uh, uh, I think it's important to also understand that uh, 
this type of, uh, of, of decisions, this type of uh, uh, behavior, they are in the, the business to business uh, relationship that uh, need to be uh, to be uh, to be decided better you can uh, um, rest assured that uh, as an industry association we are uh, working and pushing towards uh, more and more standardization knowing that the AMP 2.0 um, is not actually the, the the solution to all problems uh, and this is why other initiatives uh, like uh, uh, MIG 4.0 also mentioned in the chat uh, can really come to uh, to, to the help uh, I think that it is important in the terms of in terms of next steps uh, to understand that uh, this project is not about creating a platform. So I think that a big takeaway from from today is that I hope uh, this is clear in uh, in your future discussion and dialogue with your colleagues. Uh, we're not trying to create a super EU funded uh, uh, a new platform. Uh, it's uh, it's not the goal. Uh, actually, the goal uh, I summarize it sometimes. Uh, as um, as a word that has not really been used today, but I think it's key. It's uh, the goal of the project is to create consensus around uh, around a, a reference architecture framework, and that's actually the work of uh, work package six, uh, which is to start uh, right after work package five, uh, uh, which um, is about uh, creating a strategy, a strategic roadmap, uh, and that is uh, indeed the, the word I would use is to find consensus. This is why. DG Place is also a political exercise and not just a technical exercise. Uh, so uh, I think once again, uh, um, thank you very much for attending. One last uh, call uh, in, in the next slide, uh, you will see a QR code uh, and uh, a link which will become clickable and usable uh, when, uh, when you see the presentation on your screen, which will be sent to you after afterwards please join the community of stakeholders if you want to be involved uh, in the further steps of the of the project please be aware that the project um, is indeed being extended slightly uh, because of uh, because of covid-19 so our our initial goal to end uh, in february 2021 will be slightly shifted this is why also joining the costs uh, the community of stakeholders now makes complete sense uh, once again uh, thank you very much. I will leave it at that, uh, and I would like to thank once again uh, ERA uh, for, for joining forces with us of CC uh, for the event today. I give the phone thank back you. to you. Thank you, Ricardo. It was our pleasure. Um, thank you to all of you for your attention, for having been uh, online today. Um, well, I just hope that uh, we can meet physically again very, very soon, and, and stay safe and have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.